It's important to understand that beef checkoff dollars are distributed with a purpose. States with a high number of cattle typically don't have a high population and vice versa. For instance, 15% of the U.S. population lives where 62% of checkoff dollars are collected. 28% of the U.S. population lives where 7% of those dollars are collected. And following up on that, there are more cattle, a lot more cattle than there are people in Wyoming. How does the Federation account for that? Kevin, you're exactly right. We have in Wyoming two and a half times more cattle than people. And so what the Federation does is it allows us to be able to um, promote our product where the cattle can be consumed as beef versus where they're being raised. If we were to try and consume what we raise in Wyoming, each man, woman, and child in the state would have to eat 16 pounds of beef a day. <laughs> and we could try, but I don't know how long we'd last at doing that. <laughs> I understand. And what would you add to that, Diane? Well, I, I value that the Wyoming Beef Council has looked at those figures and understands that we have 500,000 people in the state and 1.3 million head of cattle. Mm. So it's important to send our money to the place where the consumers are and to be able to promote our product and try to sell more beef to those consumers. So Todd, tell us a little bit more about how that reallocation actually happens. Mechanically, how does that work? You bet. Well, first of all, kudos to the folks who created the checkoff program we have today because they set this system up so that 50 cents of every dollar collected automatically goes into the Cattlemen's Beef Board and then is allocated out through the operating committee. So structurally in the law we know that 50 cents is going on to national programs. The great thing about the Federation and the way it's structured is we now provide a home to the additional 50 cents upon voluntary action by state beef councils. So we become a home if you will or a pooling for what state beef councils might want to contribute beyond what they use at the state level. So structurally that happens with the dollar. The other thing we have going on within the Federation is a specific program called the Federation Initiative Fund. So this is a, a pool of money uh, that generates about $200,000 a year that state beef councils like Wyoming or Nebraska or South Dakota can contribute to specifically that will then go back out to small collecting state beef councils in the form of grants. Okay, so the dollars are a little bit different in that they're not pooling together to do national programs, but what they're doing is going back to a state beef council who might want to do a specific program at the state level in the area of retail or nutrition influencers or recently uh, the Wyoming, Idaho, uh, excuse me, the Washington, Idaho, Oregon beef councils came together with California beef council and sponsored a uh, endurance runner hmm. who covered the coast of Oregon in a, a week long run talking about the value of beef in a diet and nutrition and exercise for young people. That was funded through this Federation Initiative Fund. The great thing is, because of the bold diet that we talked about earlier, he had nutrition messages about how beef fits into a lean diet. So you can see it all comes together. We've got national dollars doing research, we've got state beef councils putting that on the ground and bringing it right to the consumers. You know, these discussions create lots of questions and, frankly, some misperceptions about both the checkoff and the Federation. And I guess, Ann, I'd ask you, from a State Beef Council perspective, what are some of the most common questions you hear? I think there seems to be a concern um, among producers about the level of involvement that they have and the opportunities for involvement that they have. And the truth is that this is a grassroots organization. The decisions are made from from being on the State Beef Council and those priorities, whether that Beef Council decides to invest in the Federation or in national programs or at the state level, that's determined by producers from each individual state. Then you can follow that up with those producers also select who serves on national committees. And from those national committees, then so selections are made for further leadership, including those who serve on the Beef Promotion Operating Committee. In addition, you have producers who are evaluating those programs in the end. So it's a producer-driven organization, mm -hmm. um, none like anything I've ever worked for before, and um, very rare and unique in that. And, and I think it's important for producers to know and understand the vast number of opportunities for them to become involved.
That's great. Todd, um, you know, there's some blurred lines, or I think some seemingly blurred lines, between activities that are more policy-driven and activities that are more checkoff-driven, and clearly with NCBA being one of uh, the, the primary contractors, I think there's, there's lots of questions that I hear about that. Could you respond to those, those issues? Certainly. I think, first of all, we have to sit back and look at the issues that our industry is facing. Mm -hmm. They are not cut and dry, very simple consumer issues or regulatory issues. Uh, for example, let's talk about the dietary guidelines, um, the My Plate program that, that um, focuses schools and nutrition experts around what is a healthy plate. That issue has an element that needs to be addressed within USDA and the regulatory arenas. Similarly, it has a consumer outreach effort that very clearly fits within the checkoff program of work. NCBA as an organization is uniquely qualified to address both sides or both areas of that issue. Mm -hmm. And very clearly as staff members, we keep close time on where we spend consumer or producer dollars. And if it's a checkoff funded activity, it does not cross the line into policy activities and vice versa. But the synergy you get by looking at that complex issue together is what we've got to do as an organization, as an industry, if we're going to solve the problems we face. Yeah. Very complex issue. Craig, from your perspective, are there one or two misperceptions you'd want to clear up with folks? Well, on the operating committee, everybody thinks that the money goes to very few contractors. And like I said before, we have 10 from the Federation, 10 from the Cattlemen's Beef Board that make up the operating committee. We have, we have planning process and we go through meetings throughout the year. We normally have three meetings in the fall. Uh, this fall in September, we'll decide the two the 2013 plan of attack that's developed by uh, uh, these joint committees and, and proposed on, on all different levels. Uh, there's actually 45 to 50 eligible contractors out there. Really? That they're, they're, they're open to come and present uh, an authorization request for a program mm. that would benefit the industry. And uh, those folks bring them in there it's a cost recovery system i want to make that perfectly clear it's cost recovery so you have to align with the plan and then you have to carry out the work and then you get paid for afterwards mm -hmm. and it's, it's strictly guided by usda mm -hmm. and uh, it's quite interesting to attend and and uh, it's open to the public because uh, for a full day, we review these proposals, and then we decide where the money is spent. It's a huge responsibility. We owe it to our, our producers that pay the dollar, mm -hmm. and we take this job very, very seriously. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Diane, we were talking earlier about some of the phone calls you field from uh, producers in Wyoming. Uh, what are some common questions and misperceptions you hear from some of the folks in your state? Well, it's interesting. One of the questions that I often get is, why are you spent sending our checkoff dollars out of state? Mm -hmm. And why aren't you utilizing all of that money in our state? And of course, it goes back to what Ann was talking about, is that we just don't have the population and we need to focus on the populations. Like in the state of New York, where they have 19 million consumers, we need to focus on them. So I, I hope we can help our locals understand that. One of the other questions I think is interesting is people often ask, what happened to that, those beef, what's for dinner, TV advertisements? Because mm -hmm. people love those and it was a great way to, to focus on our product. And truly what happened in a situation like that is that we went through the committee system and the committees analyzed how our money was being spent and what they would recommend that the money go towards. And it's a tough decision, but it's grassroots uh, cattle people that are making those decisions in the committees. They make the recommendations to the Beef Operating Committee and the Beef Operating Committee is the one that makes those decisions. And the decision was to move on and, and do some other advertising and we need to focus on some of the different social media that's now available and that's the way we can promote our product. So that was the decision that was made. Well, for whatever it's worth, I can tell you that my wife thinks that she would rather see Matthew McConaughey as opposed to hear him on the radio. So just, oh, just course, your thought. But he's got a great one. <laughs> That's right. Well, this has been a very insightful conversation. Thanks for clearing up some of those issues. There's still more to come on the Federation of State Beef Councils. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> 